wander through my end of summer garden, I think of just what it is to be living in this world and making a change and living slowly against the grain as I raise my three kiddos and stay home with them and just enjoy motherhood and homemaking and just being a Christian wife to my wonderful husband. What does that look like for me? And just reflecting on what slow living is in my life. It seems to be a trendy word amongst the homemakers, but there is something to be said about slow living. Not that we don't do anything, that's not the point of slow living, but that we don't just go about amongst the hustle and bustle of what society and the mainstream um, world does. Each day as I care for my home, I think of everything that I need to do. I am a task-oriented person and um, resting and sitting down for me can sometimes be challenging, but I do find rest in other ways like snipping dead flower heads off of my flowers in my garden and just going for walks that's restful for me and so there's different ways to find rest and I talked about that in a different video but slow living doesn't mean like I said that we don't do anything it's just the things of life that we do doing things more homemade like making chicken broth from bones i had from a whole chicken and then using that in my risotto that i'll be making tonight and so it's just the fact of taking time intentional time to take care of things and that's what i am all about here i just love the fact that i can do this for my family i can be home and um, be with my kids and make food, clean my home, make jams from scratch, and that's what you're gonna see here. These are wild plums that my dad picked when I was visiting my family, and he asked me to make him some jam, so I'm attempting it with these small plums, and that's the thing too. Sometimes they don't always go, meals and recipes don't always go as you plan, and so, You'll see that there are some issues I end up having with this plum jam, but it becomes more of a plum spread, I would say. It's still something that I was so thankful to make and try. I make a lot of other jams, which seem to be just fine, but for some reason, this one just, I don't know, there was a bit of a struggle with it, but that's okay. That is part of homemaking and failures help us learn. I took the time to pit all these little plums and cook them down with some honey, cinnamon, and pectin, and then I immersed and blended it, and um, it actually ended up sticking to the bottom and burning a little bit, but I don't know, again, like I said, it, it's coming together, and I'm canning it and going to use some in our home and give a couple to my dad. But slow living is not where we're leaving your house every day to go to an activity, running up to a big city to see what all we can shop for or what we can do. It's spending time in your homes, taking care of the space you have, reading books to your kids, making food, um, cleaning your home, and just enjoying the process as you go about your day. And I am just so thankful that my husband's job allows me to be home, to do this, to raise my kids, to make food from scratch and jams. And I was a teacher in a public school for six years and um, I enjoyed being able to do what I could for the kids as I was a music teacher and I'm passionate about it. But this stage of life is not where I'm at. And so I'm just taking advantage of what God has given me to care for my home and my children, which I talk about all the time in this slower paced, simple living life that I have. I 
was prepping for making my risotto with garlic and onions and sauteing that and having a side of zucchini, all the fresh garden produce that still is abundant. And then it's time to decorate our guest cottage for fall. I'm just adding a few simple pumpkins, a pumpkin towel, and just a few wheat stems. Nothing extravagant. I like to keep it pretty minimal at our guest cottage because I feel like when you go to a guest house, you don't want a lot of clutter, a lot of extra things all about because you want it to be a respite for you. And so that's what I've tried to make this space for my guests who come and so I'm just adding an extra pillow on the couch, changing out the table from the faux flowers to just this homemade pumpkin that I had a church lady make, and just lots of extra teeny little touches of fall, even though it's still really hot out. But, you know, I enjoy this part of slow living in decorating my home and this space as well. So that's just something to to be intentional about what you put in your home and in your space, caring for that space in the beauty factor. I think there's nothing wrong with beauty in a home and what you enjoy, whether that be neutrals, lots of color, the farmhouse style, cottage style, Victorian style, um, old world, whatever style you have, just redecorating in whatever way fits you and taking care of plants like just all this stuff to be able to do while i am home it's just what a beautiful life and i couldn't ask for anything different enjoying the last of my zinnias they are just still in full bloom but as i'm filming this voiceover we've had four days in almost 100 degrees and so they are taking a beating this is the second round of the four days of 100 degrees and it's beginning of september so you know Things take a toll. We take a toll in the heat and the run of the summer. And I definitely am one of those where I am ready for a next season. The garden season is wonderful and I love the bounty that it brings and the beauty of the flowers, sunflowers, my zinnias, being able to make flower arrangements and look at all my produce that I have picked. But there is a time to... Um, put it all to rest but there's still some fall gardening to be done so I'm going to take advantage of that and you know slow living includes just taking the times to hold our little ones to give them kisses and snuggles to enjoy a little afternoon latte and not to just go 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 and I can't stress that enough in a world where there's activities for your kids every hour after school, whether there's activities for you to go to all the time. Just take the time to stop. Take the time to say no. It's okay not to say yes to everything. To enjoy the processes of a slower life and enjoy um, your family and the place that you are given. And I am learning this as I go. I was one who would say yes to everything often. And I just had to learn it's okay not to. I am very involved in our church and I still even have to say no to certain areas of that and no to going out to other events that I may get invited to because family is important and my health is important. And if I'm constantly going, I don't have time um, to give energy to care for my family and my space. I think often times people can view this style of life as boring and they really wonder why are we not involved in all the after school activities and all these other outings going out every weekend to go to different events with my husband and I just simply feel that I love my home and I am a homebody and I like being home Yes, I get out once or twice a week with the kids. We'll head to our library. We might head up to our local city to get our groceries, um, go to a park, go to the zoo, but I am not leaving our home every day. There's something to be said too about being home and having routines and just taking that in, which helps our children, honestly, just to establish those routines and not to be overwhelmed with all the stimulation of going. So just being able to have them enjoy the slower pace of life 
enjoy sitting at the table for three meals a day. I am so fortunate to be able to have homemade food for our family with my husband at our table three meals a day and it is such a blessing that I couldn't ask for in any other way. As the evening is winding down with supper completed, I make the girls' beds with all the laundry that had to be done for the day and get that to-do list done, which is something I enjoy doing. Not everyone likes to make lists and get those done, but in my life, having a couple things on a list to check off is important. This is part of my cleaning routine on this particular day, doing all the laundry, not all the laundry, all the bedding, but yes, there was a lot of laundry as well. But it's just something as a homemaker that I think is important is to make the little list, get the things done on that list, but also enjoy the little moments in between. Um, and so that's just what I was doing. And the pile of laundry was quite large on this particular day. So just taking moments to find time to fold that laundry. With it being so hot out, we enjoyed some evening time collecting some little bugs and grasshoppers in my kids' bug collectors to examine and look at. And then I enjoyed getting some new flowers to make for our table arrangements that I love doing every week. While the flowers are still in bloom, I'm going to enjoy the beauty that they bring inside my home as well. So slow living doesn't have to be something that's looked at as boring and mundane. There is so much to be done in slow living life and simple living with being home and managing your house and sitting down to read books with your kids, cleaning up after the evening meal and after we've been outside playing and when the kids are in bed. There's still a lot to do when we are considered living in a slower life but it is beautiful all the same it is the thing that i love and i don't think i could change it or go back to my teaching job and go back to um just what that life was like for me many years ago after i quit teaching and so or before i quit teaching and so i just I enjoy the space that I have and whether you are working or whether you're home, you can still find time for slower paced life and just not be sucked into the fast pacedness of what our society has to offer and just be time at your home with your family and enjoying what God has given you for your space in your life. <music>